hello folks uh this is 23b still kicking myself huge for like wasting a ton of time recording this with no sound so i'm gonna again try to go through this a little quicker than i did last time and i hope that doesn't screw anybody up but let's talk about future tense real quick future tense is not a difficult tense to understand as regards how to translate it right i mean the future are things that will happen in the future they're not happening now they didn't happen yesterday they will happen tomorrow um so we use the word will when we're translating future the tough thing about future in latin as I said on the home page of the website for VHS, is that there is this kind of division between these our four verb conjugations and what endings are used to express future tense. So for first and second conjugations, you have these endings. You'll see bo, bis, bit, bimus, bitis, and bunt at the end of future tense verbs for only first and second conjugations. For third and fourth conjugations, you're going to see endings like am, ace, et, amos, etis, ent. And if you're thinking ahead, you're going to say to yourself, this might make it challenging to distinguish between third and fourth conjugation uh, future verbs and say second conjugation present verbs and that is a topic that's sort of discussed in this chapter but I'm not sure that you have to really wrestle with that it just does appear in all of my other classes and I know it comes up and so it does kind of look similar to second uh, conjugation present tense except for this am um, ace et amos etis ent those are like uh, vides videt videmos like you see he sees we see but um, these are actually third and fourth future endings as well. So um, with that in mind, we're going to take a look at 23B. And you're asked to identify the future verbs and then translate the sentence. So always good to read through the whole thing first to sort of, you know, find nouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, etc., uh, you know, you've probably gotten used to the idea that verbs typically come at the end of clauses or sentences. Not always, but often. So here, you see that T at the end there. That's a trigger for a, a verb ending. That's a third person singular, both here and here. And now we see these new endings, B-I-T, bit and bit. So those will be the future verbs here, expectabit and salutabit. So we can get that out of the way right away. But let's try to make sense of the whole sentence as, uh, or the sentence as a whole. Uh, Titus is Uncle Titus. He's the guy who meets them at the Porta Capena, one of the gates of the city of Rome. Uh, you remember the Cornelii finally get out of the inn and get their carriage back on the road, and then they start to see the buildings of Rome up in the distance, and it's this sort of exciting feeling as you sort of approach the city, and Marcus or Sextus says, Ecce Roma, Ecce Roma. So look, behold, Rome. So once they get there, Titus is waiting for them at the portico pane of the gate here. So this sentence refers to that, and it uses future verbs. Titus will wait for or will look out for us, nos. That could be we or us here, but because the verb here obviously corresponds to the subject here, we're going to say this is a direct object. Titus will look out for, will wait for, will expect us near the Porta Capena. And then what's going on here in the second clause is omnes now the subject. If it were, then this would be a plural verb since that's a plural, like all or everyone. Um, but this is just a, continua a continuation of what Titus is doing or will be doing uh, from the first sentence here, the first clause. So Titus will look out for us near the Porta Capena. He will greet everyone with the greatest joy, with greatest joy. The Romans say maximo cum gaudio instead of cum maximo gaudio. So I think I've mentioned that in a previous video, but look out for that. That's all one prepositional phrase here using ablative endings um, because cum is an ablative preposition. So he will greet everyone with the greatest joy. So here expectabit and salutabit. 
I'm going to just not even type these out because I'm just trying to sort of cut to the chase now that I've blown all that time. So, number two, uh, where are the verbs? Again, if we sort of scan through this, hodie magna sepulchra romanorum praeclarorum vidimus cras curiam et alia edificia romana videbimus. So maybe if you're getting good at this, you can see mus has the endings for verbs. Mus means we, we something, right? Here we saw, and here we will see. So again, I would just uh, ask your attention, focus on that, that bimus ending there. So this is a perfect tense verb, and this is a future tense verb. So if we go up ahead again, we see bimus as one of the future endings. So that one is the future verb there. Not so much this one. That's a past tense. This is a future tense. So let's go through this. Today. And then you might be tempted to say Magna Sepulchre is the subject, like the big tombs or the great tombs. And then you might mistakenly say were seen um, by Roman, by famous Romans or something like that. But this is where really knowing your cases really pays off. And if you do, then you'll know Magna Sepulchra can be a subject. That's a neuter plural right there. Sepulchrum is a second declension neuter um, plural word. But it also can be accusative direct objects here. So we're going to say, not today the big tombs, blah, 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 but today we saw the great tombs. And then if we know tent cases again, Romanorum praeclarorum is genitive plurals. Today we saw the great tombs of famous Romans. Um, so no future verb there. But here we see tomorrow. And when we think of tomorrow, we think of the future. So tomorrow we will see... And then we look for our direct objects, accusatives here. Curiam and alia idificia romana are both accusatives here. This one happens to be a feminine, first declension. And alia idificia romana are second declension neuters once again, um, direct objects. So tomorrow we will see the Senate House and other Roman buildings, idificia romana. Um, so there the only feature is videbimus, we will see. Number three, fortasse patruas noster nos ad curiam duquet. Now this, if you look, you can see that is your only, the only, only verb here is duquet. Now duco ducere is a third conjugation verb. So it uses these endings for future, am, ace, et, amos, atis, and ent. And if, and duquet is third singular like he or she will bring or will lead. So we go through this for tasse, perhaps patruas noster means our uncle will lead or will bring. And then we need a, an accusative or a, a direct object. He will bring us. And then we have this prepositional phrase ad curiam to the Senate house. Perhaps our uncle will bring us to the Senate house. Um, so duquet, future future tense verb there. One more, Cornelii omnes se parant, brevi tempore ad urbem iter facient. Here, parant is not a future tense verb, but a present tense verb. That's from paro parare to prepare. The little word se means himself or herself or themselves. So this right here is Cornelii omnes. All the Cornelii, that's the whole family, all the Cornelii, again, as, as, a, as a family, they're called the Cornelii. So all the Cornelii are preparing themselves, are getting themselves ready. That's present tense. Then we have the semicolon, brevi tempore, in a short time, ad urbem iter facient. Now here, facient, is a third io. That's like it's almost like this one here, yaki yo yakare. That's a third io, third conjugation, but an io verb. But it still uses these endings here. So here we have fakient. They will make literally they will make a journey or they will travel to the city. So in a short time they will travel to the city. All right, so that was it. I didn't write any of this out, but there's the first four out of ten for you, so there's a good chance to get 
a good amount of points to get you started for this exercise. I hope this helps, and uh, send me PTs if you do have questions. Take care.